Right, well, excavating and grain works have come to a bit of a grinding halt this afternoon because Shane, bless him, forgot that he'd arranged to go and do a concrete pour this afternoon. So they've kind of had to go and do that. So um, the pups think that this is wonderful. This is just a huge play area for them. Um, so, but the problem is, is if they carry on the way they're going, by tomorrow when Shane comes back, half of this trench is going to be filled in again. Because they're in and out and over and across it and carrying lumps of dirt and everything else around. Like, well, it's just playtime. Right, I'm just going to take a bit of bread out for the birds and then we're going to go and check the ewes and the ram. Uh, one or two of you asked about number 11 or Timothy, Timmy, Tim, whatever we're calling him. Um, so we're going to have a wander down there and for once I'm going to take the camera with me and you guys can see what's going on as well. You coming in? If I leave them behind, they complain. If I call them to come with me, they don't want to go. Just no pleasing some people. Come in. <laughs> They've got to think about it. So, well, we're more or less down, down this part of the garden. Um, obviously some tidying and fettling, and it's going to take a couple of years for it to settle down, and I'll be doing some repair over the next couple of years. Here you go, mate. I keep you busy for 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so we're, we're kind of getting there on the tank and the sewage. You come in. <sighs> right, the electrician was supposed to be coming tomorrow to. Um, wire up the pump and the power supply and everything else but obviously because we haven't even drawn the cable yet that's not going to happen so yeah a bit more fet in there that's our rodding cover and this is the actually the cover over the whole tank so the tank literally starts from over there and finishes to the side of that so yeah fair bit to do yeah right sheeps before it rains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Always got one. It's one you. You see lead down right over there? Always off by herself. Properly antisocial she is. Ah, uh, Pepper, come here. Well, I know you're keen, but not yet. Not yet. These are the two outlet pipes we've got for um, our uh, our new septic system. So the large tank, the large pipe is the overflow from the tank. So what will be pumped out of the tank has um, cleaned water. The left hand is going to pick up actually, or a lot of the gutter water off of our house. Now we've done that deliberately because. Although this stream is wet all year round, it doesn't run all year round. So the way we look at it is with the drain pipe discharging just upstream from the from this fella, we, we keep it diluted because every shower of rain we get, it may not um, filter down and, and fill the stream up, but we can at least keep keep this bit moist. Does that make sense? I think you know what I mean. In those two dry summers we had recently where it was had drought, that stream pretty much dried up. It's not really a stream. There is springs at the top there, but if we get no rain at all, they can dry up. So 
that was the thinking behind this is we can actually keep the ditch keep that flushed and keep it going because every single shower of rain will help just push anything away so come on you two come on pickle come on right okay so one two three Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I saw that, you great big bully. The... I don't know why that one you likes to be off by yourself because it's very unsheep like. Sheep are a flocking, herding creature that likes to have the company of other sheep. It's a safety net, but whether or not she doesn't like them or they don't like her. No idea, but she's always off by herself. Oh, lovely, thank you. I was at window that as well. Right, should we go find number 11? Fortunately, when the golf course planted all these trees, they didn't go too mad on the ash trees. I mean, in this section, there's only those three there. One there says four. We've we potentially could lose four or so. Um, we will possibly this year plant a couple of um, new trees in here that if these ash go, we've at least got something to take its place because I, I kind of like having the row of trees up through. Although it's a pain as far as farming's concerned and machinery and anything mechanical is a nuisance. It's, it's really nice for the stock. It gives them some shelter, so. Right. They've chewed it off fairly well out here, but there's still plenty for them. Right, where is Timmy? There he is. Come up! Good afternoon, ladies. There's Timmy in the back there. So, See him trotting up here. See, he's still here. He ain't grown though. He's no bigger. He's still a weed compared to the rest. Hello, ladies. See, you all are looking a little bit too fat still. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? How are you? Okay. Right. Well, they're all happy. He's happy as well. And they say he. That there is a little weather. Little ram lamb. Except he hasn't got any nuts, so he's not really ram lamb. He's a eunuch, castrate, jaffa, whatever you want to call him. So. And your ram lamb, the Texel which a lot of you very kindly offered names. I've had so many names for him. It was like, how can I put it? Those of you who are old enough to remember, do you remember going to the, the video shop to choose a video for your Saturday night viewing? And you'd go in the video shop and there'd be all these titles. And you'd be going, oh, that one, that one, that one, that one, oh, that one, that one. And there's so many, you can't pick and choose which one you want. Well, I kind of had that with the Ram's name. So I think he's going to get called whatever I feel like at the time. So Rambo or Romeo or Rodney or Dave or Peter or Perv, yeah, whatever. He get called what I feel like. So, but anyway, he's still well keen. In some ways, I don't want to see him working now because he should have covered all these girls. I kind of like to see him spending a bit more time with them, but. A group of the Herdwicks were around him not that long ago, so I'm assuming that he's not racist um, or even, you know, countyist because Texel, not really a local breed, is it? Not really. Actually, comes from quite a long way away from here, but the North Yorkshire. Maybe you just can't understand what they're saying. You know, I'm sure there are those from North Yorkshire who struggle to understand what I was saying. And probably as a couple from North Yorkshire, I wouldn't understand. But, but I think the further north you go, the harder it gets. 
in both directions or across the Irish Sea to the other side you know there's a lot of uh, folks and channels I watch over here at the uh, Irish Channel really enjoy their stuff but I have to listen because I don't always quite catch it so it's just words they're just a bit different so that dog is as keen as mustard Pepper are you watching you you are keen ain't you Hey, you are keen. I don't mind her being keen, just not too keen yet because if one of those sheep ewes lays into her, it could spoil her. Right. Well, that's looking all right. We dug this out a bit earlier in the year, so give um, give a duck something to come to. So I might might put a bit of stuff around this pond to attract a few wild ducks. And then maybe I can put a board duck on the menu for Christmas. Maybe. If you fall in there, I will laugh at you. Mrs P won't. She won't be happy at all, but I'd laugh. OK. Come on. Well, anyway, all sheep are present and correct. Nothing is on its back with its feet in the air. Everything is breathing, nothing is lame from what I can see of it. They're all, if anything, a little bit too fat. Uh, we had a go at flushing them before we put them to the ram, but it all happened a bit too suddenly and they weren't what I would call flushed out properly. What they really want to do is going on some sparse, thin feeding of grass. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, they were going on some thin grass for uh, three or four weeks and skinny them down a bit and then as we put the ram into them or just before I put the ram in put them on some good stuff that did just just makes them release more eggs all right got another ash tree there we're probably going to lose another ash tree there we're probably going to lose and another one there but until they become susceptible I won't cut them down because who's to say that one of these isn't resistant to the disease. Where's she gone now? Oh, I'll bring it up the rear again. Was you eating something disgusting or something? Probably. All right, so you've got some as well. All right, um, I mentioned it in um, a little video I did there or so back. Uh, Anonymous hispidus, which is the velvet fungus or shaggy polypore and I doubt you can see it but in there there is a, another bracket of it so I I think we're probably going to pollard this tree um, it is what we call a veteran ash so it's been pollarded before getting on a bit now but he, he is looking a bit a bit unhappy so yeah that one is a prospect for pollarding same as this. This is um, an old pollard oak tree. So sometime in the past, maybe one of my ancestors, maybe my grandfather or or before pollarded this oak. Um, it was a technique used years and years ago. Um, they would use um, uh, the pollard cuttings for firewood, for fuel, not so much oak with feeding, but um, Elm and that they used to use quite a lot for feeding, for doing the hedges. But uh, yeah, I won't pull out him again. I'm going to leave him alone. I quite like that tree. All our new trees that we planted in here, and they very cleverly put up two strands of barbed wire. What do the sheep do? Especially the herdwicks, straight under the wire. So I might have to put up a little strand of barb there. Some of them have survived. I can still see some of them in their tubes. What have you got there? Don't eat that, it's disgusting. God, you horrible dog. What is it with you and eating shh stuff? Okay, come on. So these little ash trees here we'll probably lose. I'll be sorry to see that one go. Like that's another um, veteran. And I expect you can see the hole up in there. Every year, the little owls nest in that tree. 
Always have done. Ever since I was a kid, I was a kid, I remembered little owls nesting in that tree. Um, but we might have to. I don't know we'll keep an eye on him. We might have to do a reduction on him too. Maybe. These few ash stems here. Um, although I've got no, I'm in no rush to take them down. I won't actually mind if we lose these because they block quite a lot of the view from the house then across the ground. And if anything, we're trying to open that up anyway. So, oh dear. There's another one. These things don't last very long. But, oh, it's just so brittle. You know what? I don't want the plastic. Oh. I'll just put it in the bin. Every farmer should have one of these. You know what it is? I'll show you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my pipe clamp. So, I bought this 15 years ago. Um, what's that say on there? I can't actually read what that says now. PL something other 320D. Um, basically, this is a adjustable pipe clamp that you can use for shutting off water, gas, basically any modern sort of plasticky type pipes you can use for this. So um, on the end, I don't know if you can see this on the end of here, you've got different sizes, so different size pipes. So that face there is a 32. Um, millimeter pipe. That one there, I can't read it because what does that say? Int or something, I can't remember. That one there is 20 millimeter, and that one there is 25 mil. So uh, predominantly on the farm we have only 20 mil and 25 millimeter pipe. So this thing suited me fine. Look. Not having it yet. In a minute, right? Um, although I've got stop taps on various bits of the farm, I can shut stuff off. Sometimes, if you just want to walk on, work on a bore cock or something, or say you've got a bore cock on, on a water tank gone, and you haven't got time to go and shut all the water off, or you don't want to shut all the water off, this is the chap you would use to literally just close off that one bit of pipe, just by pinching the pipe and setting this to the size pipe you want. So for me, for 20 mil, I would have him like that. This square is offset. Both these squares are offset. So it basically means that when I do this up tight, you can't actually over tighten the um, uh, pipe. You can't squeeze it so much so you could do any damage. So that gap in there is a predetermined and set gap set by the square on the, on the adjustment here that um, you can squeeze that pipe tight enough to close the water off or the gas or whatever it is, else it is, but not so tight that you damage the pipe. So there you go. Um, I don't know. I did not buy this off of Amazon. I bought this in a shop, but I'll go and have a look. And if I can find this on Amazon, I'll put it in the Amazon shop link in the links below the video here. So, um, yeah, if I can find it, I'll, uh, I'll stick it in there. Look, look in the um, uh, farm equipment page of the Amazon shop below, and maybe if I found it, you'll find that fella in there. But if you're a farmer or you deal with water or whatever else, and you have not got one of these, I think it was about 35, 40 quid. But if you've got water spring everywhere in the middle of winter, it's worth every penny.